What's up, everybody? Welcome to Heresy Financial. My name is Joe Brown, and it looks like the market has finally turned around. It uh, hit its low Thursday and Friday last week, and uh, there have been a couple things that we're going to dive into on this video that make it look like this uh, correction in the bull market is uh, has, has turned the corner and we're uh, back up into the rally. Let's dive in. All right, so I know that plenty of you think that technical analysis is basically voodoo, and uh, it quite possibly is, but the fact of the matter is that there's uh, plenty of money out there that uses it, and therefore, uh, even if it is a self-fulfilling prophecy, that still means that uh, at least some of the time it works. So if you take a look at this chart, you can see that uh, the, this uh, this correction that we've been in since uh, pretty much the whole month of September, it looks like we've broken out and we've sustained this breakout now. There was at least a triple bottom in the major indices here right along this line. And then once we broke out of that uh, downward sloping trend line, it looks like uh, this, uh, this correction is uh, probably over. Now, that's from a technical perspective. A couple other things to keep in mind is that uh, usually a, uh, you know, a 10% correction is enough to uh, get rid of some of the froth, release and shake out some of the, uh, the weak hands. Another thing to keep in mind is that normally after a market or an asset makes new highs, it is going to have a sell-off to come and retest to make sure that that was a legit breakout. And so we've seen, at least with tech stocks, that's been uh, that's been true. With the S&P 500, it did come down a little bit below its previous all-time highs, but it stayed at those elevated levels there and never really sold off very far below. And it looks like now this is establishing a new base that it will you know continue to uh, uh to grow from here. Further than that, the gains over the last few days have been shared broadly across all members of the indices. It hasn't been like it was in August where, or maybe even July too, where most of the gains were uh, just uh, from a couple of large uh, companies in the index. The solid performance has been shared among most, if not all of the members of these indices. And so that is a, uh, that is a strong indicator, especially because this sell-off in September has been has mostly been those large companies that were most of the gains from August and July. So this is what I've been saying, uh, you know, previously over the last couple of months is that uh, yes, a lot of the gains that we've had since the lows in March have been driven by just a few players that have had massive outperformance, but that means that we don't have the same ability for a massive sell-off like we had in February and March. It's the opposite. We have a lot of uh, potential energy to explode to the upside. Now, so far you haven't heard me give any fundamental reasons for why the stock market should be going up. And and that's because I think there are very few. Mostly the economy is crumbling, but uh, one thing that uh, is uh, causing this rally is the increased liquidity from the Federal Reserve recently. And it did top out, the Federal Reserve's balance sheet did top out in July before it uh, kind of corrected down a little bit. It got smaller. And since then, now it's been on a strong trajectory up. And uh, within probably just a couple of weeks here, it will be at a new uh, all-time high in terms of the size of their balance sheet. And so they're continuing to expand expand their asset purchases, continuing to expand the size of their balance sheet, and all that new money will continue to flood into asset prices before it hits other prices like goods and services. And then finally, my price targets. I said this in a past video, but if you didn't see that one, I still am holding on to my price targets. I've just bumped out my date. I think the uh, election might be a little bit too soon for some of these price uh, price targets to be hit simply because the volatility that's been uh, that's being priced in to asset prices uh, because of the election actually and it's looking more and more like the election is going to be one of these events that is uh, kind of a uh, sell the rumor by the fact type of thing where there's a lot of volatility a lot more volatility priced in uh, about the election than will actually occur afterwards we should see less and less of the fear narrative uh, about covid if uh, we get a biden win simply because most of the uh, media outlets outlets that are pushing that fear narrative are left-leaning and so they'll want good news if they win and so I expect that to reverse and I wouldn't expect the right to kind of step in and say hey you know things are actually bad now from a from a COVID or coronavirus perspective because they've been the ones all along pretty much saying, hey, it's no big deal. And so that should provide some energy for the stock market going up if we get a Biden win and markets should disregard the uh, potential tax hikes because uh, in an environment like we are now where the economy is so fragile, I would be uh, you know, shocked if, if any of those tax hikes were uh, put in place uh, very soon. 
normally those would be put in place after there's been some sort of an economic recovery. And they can't very well say that they want a, uh, a, a tax hike because there's been an economic recovery when at the same time they're saying, hey, we need more you know, spending, you know, more left-leaning spending for social programs. So you kind of need an excuse to have that kind of, uh, that kind of like universal basic income or debt forgiveness for student loans or universal basic income or extra healthcare spending. You need some sort of a crisis or some sort of an economic downturn as an excuse for that spending. And so I would be surprised if, uh, if we do get a tax hike soon into a uh, Biden administration. And even if we do, a lot of those concerns have already been priced into the market. That's one of the main concerns that's causing some of the, uh, it's been causing some of the selling pressure over September. Now, on the other hand, if we get a Trump win, all of those tax hike concerns will go out the window. And we've already seen uh, a Trump administration that is committed to spending more than any Republican or Democrat administration has spent in the past. So markets should expect more and more of that, which should put asset prices high, no new regulation fears or anything like that. And so uh, either way, it's looking like there's more volatility being priced into the market ahead of the election than there will be after words. And so it looks like the melt up that I've been talking about in asset prices, especially gold, probably silver and probably in stocks will start to happen once the election is done into the end of the year. There's still a lot of cash on the sidelines right now. There are a lot of wealthy investors who are just sitting mostly in cash because they're waiting for the uncertainty to pass. And so once the uncertainty passes, markets don't like uncertainty, markets like certainty. And so once that passes, there is a lot of firepower that is sitting on the sidelines that is not invested right now. So $2,500 gold, $35 silver, 15,000 Bitcoin, and 3,800 for the S&P 500. Those price targets, I'm still sticking to them but for the end of the year now instead of the election. As always, I really appreciate it. You guys are the best. Have a great day.